Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Christopher Berle from Canuck Resources, and we're discussing gold, silver, copper, high-grade gold, and IOCG discoveries, correct? Yes, correct. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, so let's start with the news release that just came out this morning. In this news release this morning, you said you were delighted that Natural Resources Canada had selected your McLaren Lake Fault Zone for a seismic survey. Can you tell us why? Uh, well, it, it, the, it's for me, it started in, uh, uh, in 2024. Uh, when I was on site, there were there were a number of geoscientists there from all over the world, IOCG X specialists, iron oxide, copper, gold uh, deposit type specialists from Australia, from the Netherlands, from South Korea. I recall being astounded at the uh, number of places where they had come from and they were working uh, being they were working as consultants for Natural Resources Canada to um, to evaluate properties for prospectivity where they thought that Natural Resources Canada could spend money for maximum impact for lar- very large deposit type discoveries uh, and in particular they were looking for these uh, uh, MIAC or uh, IOCG deposit types and um, the the result of their work uh, and they reviewed many properties across the country, was that this McLaren fault, uh, McLaren Lake fault zone on Canucks ground there um, was, 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 the, was the property uh, that most deserved, uh, you know, further work and research by NRCAN uh, in the pursuit of this uh, very large valuable deposit type. So that was, that was uh th- that was great you know it's great that they had that 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 it's it uh that the prospectivity of this property was uh supported by that level of uh review that's what we were we were delighted by we we're delighted by the by the commitment from natural resources canada to proceed to spend money on the project and to conduct this seismic survey will you be able to review all the results of course and um um the the there will be interpretation. I uh, will be involved in interpretation. There'll be several specialists involved in interpretation and it will provide very specific actionable intelligence for follow-up drilling. What is the timeline for securing this intelligence? Uh, within one month, I would say, of completing the survey. We're doing all the work for the survey now. Uh, we're preparing, they're using um, drill holes, previously drilled diamond drill holes. We're cementing receptors down the hole so that uh, we'll be able to receive the seismic, the results of the seismic uh, interpretations there. And um, um, the the actual survey itself is scheduled for the end of March, beginning of April, 2026. And your website, I was just going on your website to understand this a little bit better this morning. And it says you have two IOCG exploration projects. How about we talk about these two? Okay, um, yes, the, the, there's this in um, in both instances, they've been supported by some you know, very credible geological review. Uh, it, we have this stuff in Sudbury now supported by NRCAN research, um, looks very much like a MIAC system, IOCG iron, the gold that comes with iron, et cetera. We have a very, uh, a compelling case for a silver dominant IOCG in Mexico on our San Javier claims, which we've done a lot of work on. So there's magnetite there. The silver comes with magnetite, and that was first identified by Dr. Murray Hitzman, who is a specialist, was one of the one of the people that began the IOCG model interpretations in the 1990s. And he, at the time he visited that area, was um, um, uh, he was the head of economic geology at the Colorado School of Mines. So he subsequently had another one of the students conduct a PhD in that area. And really, they were looking for magnetite. They had seen all the hallmarks of IOCG geology, uh, the feldspars, the the, uh, the soda, sodic alteration, um, lots of iron. They were looking for magnetite. Um, and um, in particular, his report identified that that the presence of magnetite would would uh, would uh, indicate the, the potential core for the IOCG system. And we found that magnetite massive magnetite on our ground and we found that it contains silver which is consistent with what that what an iocg deposit in mexico might be like i mean they're from deep in the mantle and there's a tremendous amount of silver throughout mexico 
Um, in, so it would be it would be consistent with that that it's in the mantle. It would be consistent with that that they will be found in an IOCG deposit. So we found up to bonanza grades of silver. We found these massive magnetite anomalies, uh, magnetic anomalies, and we have one in particular that looks like it uh, on either sides that the veins daylight with bonanza grades of silver. There's silver in soils above this magnetic anomaly. It's a kilometer long, about 800 meters wide. Um, and could support a, a, a very substantial silver metal inventory in, in magnetite, which is the IOCG model. So, um, you know, that, that's the one in Mexico that's silver, and we have copper gold, um, uh, IOCG geology and prospectivity in, in, in Sudbury, in the East Sudbury project. So there are two within the company, yeah. And for those of you out there who may not be familiar with exploration projects, these are very large scale exploration projects with amazing infrastructure close, close by. Can you comment on this? They are indeed large. They're very valuable, high grade, uh, and they get names. You know, they're, set, they're unique, large deposit sites. So Candelaria, Olympic Dam, Candelaria um, in Chile, uh, a little bit more copper in that. Con again, consistent with the mantle structures in Chile. Uh, Olympic Dam in Australia uh, with uranium, a lot of uranium in the mantle in Australia, Ernest Henry in Australia, Sasego. So that, you know, they're, they're big, valuable uh, uh, metal concentrations that come with iron from, from generally from deep in the mantle, this metasomatic format. Um, and, um, and, and they're, and they're relatively high grade because of the, uh, because of the uh, uh, multiple mobilization events. So they're valuable deposits and they're basically company makers. Speaking of being company makers, for those of you who have followed Christopher Berlay, you have an interesting model you utilize with your companies. You always have a cash flow component and you have a cash flow component with Canuck. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah, and some of them in, with varying degrees of success. So in the instance of Canuck, we have these long life natural gas wells in Texas. Great, but not sufficient to support exploration. We've added the um, there is a royalty on tailings project, 4% royalty on the tailings that we're doing, uh, that we're processing um, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the site of the Scatting uh, 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 tailings rehabilitation project in, in um, East Sudbury. Um, and, and then um, we're now drilling for a high-grade gold lens, the first of several, on this East Sudbury project that, uh, that can, will support a much more substantive, still small scale for a mining company, but but robust capital opportunity for the company if we pursue bulk sample permits. We're looking at uh, potentially 15 to 20,000 ounces and maybe a net high grade gold near surface, a net recovery of, uh, you know, tens of millions, 70 to 80 million would be very feasible. Um, uh, Canadian Canadian dollars uh, from at these gold prices from the high grade gold lens we're looking at uh, next to the the site of the uh, scanning gold mine. So the and the reason for this is that really at the end of the day all of this exploration, especially for these deposit types, IOCG or porphyries, but these are IOCG, um, require you know substantial investments of capital, and. Um, you know, you, you you run the risk of having significant dilution if you don't have a mechanism for paying, paying at least some of the bills within the company. So it's, it makes sense to combine cash flow uh, opportunities and to pursue them uh, and to control the issuance of shares. That ultimately allows you to re-rate the value of your shares uh, with, with successful discovery. And for those of you whose ears have perked up with that last answer and are running to your website to find out more information, what should shareholders be looking forward to in the upcoming quarter? So in the coming quarter, we're going to uh, we're going to have some drill results imminently. We've got six holes already in the lab from the drilling that we announced October 30th. Um, and we're going to we're drilling that high grade gold lens uh, off of the uh, scanning gold mine. You know, we're going to have uh, we're going to have those results. So so, uh, you know, and, and in the past, they've hit uh, more than 12 meters of more than an, of an, 36 grams, so above an ounce, so exceptionally good. Um, and uh, so we'll have more of that. We'll have uh, pursuit of this seismic. We'll have, um, we have some other work that we're doing that would, that would, uh, that will, that will be in pursuit of IOCG type geology, lots of further work um, on, on the East Sudbury project. So there'll be a, a really, um, substantial flow of news. I expect news items at least a couple of months, actually, for the, at least the next six months. And, and then by the spring, we will have, uh, we will be talking about the, the beginning of the, uh, of the tailings reprocessing project, which will provide a royalty and further cash flow to Canuck. 
For those of you interested in finding out more about Canuck Resources or Christopher Berlay, please go to the following website. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Tracy.